Hi there. Today, we'll be going over how I edit my photos in Adobe Lightroom from portraits to landscapes. Let's get started. Typically, my process for editing photos is done in three key steps. Applying the preset, making adjustments to the preset, and finally making final adjustments and edits in Photoshop. So let's dive straight into the edit. First up, we have a portrait. And the first step that I always take is to apply one of my presets. Let's apply the look. Links in the description below. But as you can see here, it's looking good, but it's also a bit dark. But that's okay because we could just adjust the exposure slider to make sure that everything is properly exposed. That's a little bit too bright. I think that's a little. I think that's just right. What I like about this image is the comp. I love the composition of this image. I love how like the leading lines are there. I love how my friend Hannah is lit really nicely but also how her face kind of contrasts with the darker background behind her so already with the preset applied and exposure slider adjusted it's already looking good maybe i want to make some adjustments for example maybe make it a little bit brighter add a little bit more contrast decrease the highlights a little bit increase the whites crush the blacks just and like as you saw there, like that increased a little bit of like the contrast to make her pop from the background. And that's already looking really good. I don't think I want to make any other changes to the coloring, but I can already see some of the adjustments that I want to make in Photoshop. First off, flyaways. I want to get rid of them and also maybe get rid of the cars, but also quite like the car there. The first thing I do before moving anything into Photoshop is to remove the grain effect because when you're doing content aware fill or healing brush tool, it kind of looks really weird when the grain is also moved around. So I like to apply grain at the very end if I'm moving stuff to Photoshop. So before we move it to Photoshop, just remove the grain effect from preset. And then in order to move it to Photoshop, all you got to do is right click, edit in and then Photoshop or if you like me and you like keyboard shortcuts, just Command E, Control E. Anyways, click on that. And then after a bit, Photoshop should open. Amazing. So we have the photo now open in Photoshop. The first thing I always like to do when editing photos in Photoshop is to make a duplicate of the image to save the original, just in case we mess up, we don't like to edit, keep the original. So what I'm going to do is press Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. Now we have a fresh new layer to make adjustments on. In order to get rid of these flyaways, I'm just going to use the healing brush tool, the spot healing brush tool or J on the keyboard. I'm just going to paint out the flyaways using the spot healing brush tool. I'm probably going to speed this up. Rush through that a little bit, but now that the flyaways are removed, I quite like the image as it is so um, what i'm going to do is press save and it'll actually create a duplicate in lightroom so that we can make our final adjustment so command s to save and once it's saved we can return to lightroom and as you can see here it's actually created a second variation with the photoshop adjustments without the flyaways great so what i'm going to do now final adjustment is to add back the green so just add the green there. What I like is I like to actually do 35 and 35. Well, this is more of like personal preference. Maybe you want a little bit less green. Maybe you want more green. It's entirely up to you. That's pretty much it for the portrait. Let's move on to the landscape photo. But before we move on to the landscape photo, I want to take a little bit of a moment to talk about today's sponsor, playbook after you've edited your amazing photos you want to send it off to your friends send it to clients you want to send it off in the nicest way possible i used to use google drive but then i quickly ran out of storage because 15 gigabytes is not that much i moved over to WeTransfer, but then the two gigabyte file sharing limit was really hindering my process. That's when I stumbled across Playbook, a digital storage platform built by creatives or creatives. Even better is that they're giving away four terabytes of creative storage for free. And I'll tell you how you can get that in just a second. Playbook is like if Google Drive was merged with Pinterest, allowing you to upload, store, manage your files like Google Drive, but also share them in an aesthetically pleasing way 
like Pinterest. And so if you're interested in getting this four terabytes of storage for free, all you have to do is sign up using the link in the description below. And thank you so much to Playbook for sponsoring this video. Now onto the landscape photo. A little bit of story. This photo is really special to me because it was the first photo that I felt like my photography was improving and that it was actually getting recognized. I'm grateful that this photo was selected as part of Take More Photos Living London initiative and it was displayed in a billboard in the center of London for several months and it was such a surreal experience seeing my photo in, on a, such a big scale along with so many other talented creatives. But enough of the story, let's get into editing. So again, the first step is to apply the preset and then let's start making our adjustments. Already, we can see it's really dark. So again, the first thing we're gonna do is increase the exposure just so that it feels about right. The key aspect of this image is that the sunset was spectacular. And so I wanna retain the highlight, the details in the highlights. So I'm just gonna drop the highlights down, drop the whites down a little bit. That's already looking good. This was also shot through a window and window the window wasn't very clean and also make windows tend to make images a little bit hazy. So we're gonna dehaze the image by increasing that about to about 20. Dehaze makes it less hazy, but also decreases the exposure a little bit. So let's compensate a little bit by that. Now, this is a sunset. I wanna really capture how fiery the sunset was. So let's make this image warmer by going straight to the white balance make it warmer and adding a little bit of magenta as well. And already, that's looking good. That's looking really good. Maybe add a little bit of contrast. There we go. Make the highlights pop a little bit more. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna crank up the vibration and saturation just to really emphasize how fiery that sunset was. Last but not least, just making sure that the horizon is level. So pressing R to open up the crop tool. There you have it. One of my favorite photos of all time. And finally, because all good things come in threes, let's move on to a street photography style image. And again, same exact process. We're gonna apply the preset make adjustments. So I think the exposure is quite nice. Looking at the histogram, it seems quite balanced as well, but it seems a little bit too warm. Uh, the preset automatically makes images a little bit warmer. I want to actually revert back to as shot, the white balance as shot, and then gonna actually increase the warmth just a little bit. Already, I think the image looks great. There's not many adjustments to be made. However, I do want to get rid of these distractions. So what I'm going to do is actually bring this into Photoshop, Command E, Control E, bring it into Photoshop and then use the Gen AI fill tools to remove these pillars, posts, ballards, so that this image feels a little bit more clear. It's all these small details that make an image greater. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the lasso tool with L select out the sh the pillars and their shadows and all i'm going to do is press generate to fill wait for that to complete and i love this tool because it makes editing so much faster like you could use content aware tool and spot healing brush tool to remove these things, but it's just so much more efficient to use the Gen AI fill tool. However, that being said, I am not happy that they're going to start charging for this later this year and we need to find an alternative. But until then, let's make the most out of it. <laughs> and already that's looking great. Let's select. I'm going to continue selecting all of this and we'll see what the final image looks like. And there you have it. Image looks great. Let's save that, bring it back into Lightroom, make any final adjustments. Don't think we need to make any final adjustments. Image is looking clean. 
once again, once you added a photo in Photoshop and bring it back to Lightroom, Lightroom will create a duplicate of this. And here you can go into the crop tool, crop and straighten tool and make your final adjustments. I think this is already looking great. And so, yeah, there you have it. This is how I personally edit my photos in Lightroom. Hopefully you learned something new and hopefully this has also inspired you to try a new editing method in your workflow as well. And so once again, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.